Let's have a look at a couple of cool applications of Faraday's law now. So one useful application is in electromagnetic braking. So to understand how this works, let's have a look at this eddy current pendulum here. So my eddy current pendulum consists of a metal plate. So this is not magnetic, but it can conduct currents. And this metal plate is going to travel through an electromagnet. So because it's an electromagnet created from solenoids, I can turn the magnetic field on and off. So in this case, I've got a north pole closest to the camera and a south pole furthest from the camera. And so the magnetic field lines are going into the screen. Let's have a look at what happens to my eddy current pendulum. So here it is swinging freely, and then when I start current flowing, you can see it comes to a fairly rapid stop. So let's have another look at that. So let's now discuss what was going on. As the metal plate approaches this magnetic field, and we've said that the North Pole is closest to the camera, so the magnetic field in this case is going into the screen, then that's going to result in a magnetic field being induced in the plate. The magnetic field which is induced is going to oppose the change that induces it. So we're going to get a magnetic field which is coming out of the screen induced in this plate. So how that will be induced is that we'll get little whirls of current called eddy currents which are induced. And if the induced magnetic field is out of the screen, then we can see that the current is going to have to flow around these little whirls in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, if we consider the net current which is flowing along this edge here from those whirls, you can see that along this edge, they're going to sum together and we're going to have a net current which is going down this edge. If we now use the right hand rule and consider our equation F is equal to I L cross B, you can see that there's going to be a force in this case and that that force is going to be back away from the magnets, so in the opposite direction to the velocity. And so this is going to slow the metal plate down. Now once it's passed through the magnetic field and is starting to move away, we're now going to get a magnetic field which is induced into the screen because the magnetic field through the plate is decreasing. So in this case, we're going to get little eddy currents which are flowing again, and those eddy currents are this time going to flow in a clockwise direction so that they induce that magnetic field which is into the screen. So if we consider the net current along this edge in that case, you can see that the little whirls will add together to give a net current which is going down. And then with our right hand rule and F is equal to I L cross B again, you can see that this is going to result in a force which is back towards the magnet. So once again in the opposite direction to the velocity. So as a result of this, it's going to quite rapidly bring the plate to a stop. So eddy currents are used in electromagnetic braking. Electromagnetic braking is commonly used to slow down rotational motion. So the eddy currents which are generated oppose the change which is inducing them and this provides a torque acting in the opposite direction to the direction of the initial motion. Now eddy currents are also used in induction cooktops. In an induction cooktop we have a changing magnetic field which then induces eddy currents to flow in metal saucepans that we put on top of our stove. And so it's actually the resistance to those eddy currents to which are producing the current which causes the saucepan to heat up and that energy is then transferred into whatever we're cooking in our saucepan. So another really cool application of Faraday's law is in the Tesla coil. So the Tesla coil is an electrical transformer resonance circuit which was designed by Nikola Tesla in 1891. So he had an enormous one set up in his lab that he used to show off to visitors. So let's have a look at what happens when we turn the Tesla coil on. 
So what's actually happening is that we're getting a really high voltage at a low current up here, which is producing those beautiful purple sparks that we can see. And here it is in the dark so that we can see it even better. So a Tesla coil consists of four components. We've got a power supply, we've got a capacitor, an air gap here, and here we've got a transformer. So the capacitors charge up. Once the charge on the capacitor gets high enough, then that charge induces an electric field across the spark gap, which is high enough to rip apart the air molecules, ionizing them, which allows sparks to jump across the spark gap like this. When the spark jumps across the spark gap, it sends a very high current very quickly into the primary coil of the transformer here. So the current flowing through the primary coil then induces a current in the secondary coil, which produces a really high voltage, which then ionizes the air up here. So let's just consider exactly how the transformer works. So the transformer here consists of a primary coil with a small number of turns. So we'll call the number of turns in the primary coil NP and a secondary coil, with a much larger number of turns, which we'll call NS. Now, because these are wrapped about the same core, we've got essentially the same changing magnetic flux through both the primary coil and the secondary coil. So for the primary coil, we can write, well, the voltage induced across it, the EMF, we can write as VP is equal to minus NP d phi B d T using Faraday's law. And for the secondary coil, we've got that the voltage induced across this VS is equal to minus NS d phi B d T. And we've said, well, it's the same d phi B d T because these are wrapped about the same core. So this tells us that d phi B d T is equal to minus VP over NP, which is equal to minus VS over NS. So we can rearrange this to calculate the voltage induced in the secondary coil, and we can see that VS is going to be equal to VP times NS over NP. So if we have a lot more coils in our secondary coil, then in our primary coil, then NS over NP is going to be a really high number and we're going to get a really large voltage induced in that secondary coil. And so that produces these beautiful sparks 